Hello and welcome everybody. This is Rick Serrano, your executive and life coach, saying hello from Luxembourg. I hope everybody is doing very, very well. I would like to welcome you to the 10th uh, session of the program New Leaders Journey, which has been created precisely for new leaders who have just been promoted or are now starting a new phase in their careers to manage people and to manage businesses. Uh, so the program is called New Leaders Journey and it consists of uh, 15 sessions and this is session number 10, Selecting Talent. Um, today is Friday the 20th of September 2023 and we hope you can benefit from this program. Uh, just to put you in context of uh, the different uh, topics that we have been uh, discussing, we have discussed about the leadership styles, then efficiency and effectiveness, then innovation in your team. From there, we move to the question of do managers matter? We move then to the topic of motivating your team, making people do managing underperformance, self-promotion was our number eight session. Then we discussed about the team training program and now we are talking about selecting talent. So the topic for today, selecting talent. Let me just start by giving you some ideas uh, about how difficult it is these days to find the right talent for your company, to find the right people for the jobs that you need to staff. And this is really, um, the images that I bring you today are a lot about fishes because I think it's an ocean out there with so many candidates and so many people and so many people looking for jobs. And whenever we need to staff a position, we need to go to that ocean and find the, the best fishes and find the best people. So that's the analogy. Um, so the first question that I would like to, to invite you to reflect upon is the question of, do you need talent? And if yes, why? So um, there is uh, some discussions going on on the HR circles about the need for real talent, the need for uh, identified or previously identified talent in organizations, or uh, do we simply need good people? Do we need people who are talented? That, that's a huge discussion, uh, but let me start by assuming that we all want at some point to hire talent in our organizations. Let me start by the assumption that talent is something important indeed, and that uh, organizations who uh, hire talent, develop talent, and keep talent are the ones who succeed. So that's the basic assumption. Now, um, the, the other question is, what shall we look for in talent? So if we, if we say we need talent, what exactly, what kind of people do we need? What are the characteristics that we're looking for in a talent? What are the specific uh, traits that a, an individual should have to be labeled as a talent? What are the strengths? What are the, the, the skills that he or she should have? That's something that we should um, consider as well. Another question that I uh, bring here to the table is, well, precisely the ease or difficulties of finding talent. You know, these days, um, many companies struggle to find talent uh, or some hire the talent, but then struggle to keep it. And it's important to see, okay, is, what, what are the difficulties facing the finding and the identifying, the recru recruiting and the keeping of that talent? Then let me ask you yet another question. What are the steps needed to find talent? So imagine that you are trying to fill a given position. What are the steps needed to find talent? How do you go about this? And then, you know, a typical temptation is to say, well, let's go to HR. Well, let me ask you, is this an HR's job? So is if the challenge or the task of finding talent, is this an HR job? Well, I tend to strongly disagree. I think it is in the best interest of everybody in the company to try and find the best possible talent. And HR might have the operational task of finding the talent and hiring the talent. But 
honestly, if you as new managers want to have talent, you are the number one involved in this decision and in this process. That's the way I personally see it. So that is why I believe that it's so important that you realize how critical this is for your success, how important this is for your own personal and professional success. If you are able to identify, if you're able to hire, and if you are able to retain and develop the talent, you will be successful. That's the point of all, of all of it. As you know, in my coaching, I always tell you over and over, I always tell you what matters to me is your own development, your own happiness, your own success. So this is why the question of finding talent cannot be an HR's job. It is your job. Now, you, of course, are going to work with HR to, to find that talent, but you should make it like your own, so your own responsibility and your own task. And you should also, as I always tell you, enjoy it because finding talent can be a lot of fun, can be a very rich learning experience. Now, we also need to look at the context, as always. Um, there is a real mare magnum of online recruiting out there, as you know. There is a huge, huge uh, ocean out there uh, on the internet. Uh, and these days, finding talent, finding jobs is all a matter of navigating that mare magnum of online recruiting. Let me just give you some stats. So uh, when people tell me, uh, Rick, what is important to know about the process of uh, hiring and finding talent? Well, let me tell you, for example, this, this stat. And you have the source there. 80% of all job searches are done online, but 85% are filled through networking. Isn't this impressive? 80% of all job searches are done online, and yet 85% are filled through networking. So you immediately start to think whether uh, what, what the role of the online process is, right? Let me give you another very interesting um, um, piece of data. 65% of currently employed individuals, so probably like you, probably like me, are looking for new jobs. <laughs> Imagine how complex this makes things, right? 65% of people. Another statistic, 70% of all jobs are never published publicly. You know, we often have discussions here that all jobs should be posted online. Well, let me tell you, 70% of all jobs are never published publicly, according to this uh, think tank, uh, whose uh, source you can see here uh, on the bottom. Now, let me give you yet another piece of data. 75% of online applications get rejected by their automatic tracking system, simply because of the way they are formatted. That means that you can be a fantastic candidate for a job and you have 75% of chances that the system rejects you simply because of the way your CV and your application is written. So imagine how complex this makes it, right? Now, let me tell you one final thing about these statistics. 79% of job seekers use social media when conducting a job search. That will not surprise you. More than 90% of recruiters use LinkedIn to search for candidates to fill a company job openings. The average company interviews around six to eight people to and for an open position. So this, you know, look at the numbers. I, I think it is very, very impressive, right? So what am I telling you in substance? What am I telling you? Well, I'm telling you that it's a chaos out there. It is a real chaos out there and you need to Identify it and learn to navigate that chaos to really find the fishes that you want. Now, let me start by uh, discussing something here. So, if there is such a such a mare magnum, such a chaos out there, so so how do we go about searching for talent for a given position? Well, I have some rules as always. Rick Serrano brings you always some rules to apply. So let me go through them. So first of First and very, very important, quite obvious maybe, but it is very important. Define the role clearly, clearly. Many times we think, oh, I need a whatever finance analyst. Uh, I need a claims professional. I need a, whatever. And we don't take the effort 
of really creating the detailed job description that outlines the responsibilities, the qualifications, and what we expect from the person when the person is in the role. This is very important and is very often left to someone else, left to HR or simply using, or, or people simply use the previous role. Well, start here and work carefully. That's my first piece of advice. My second piece of advice is use multiple sourcing channels. So do not focus only on LinkedIn, on only on job boards, on only on some specific uh, websites. You want to have an array of uh, sources promoting your job so that you can get a uh, different kind of people. Because of course, different kind of people are looking at different kind of platforms. So this is quite obvious, but still I want to. Now, the third one, I think is very, very important. Remember we said that a lot of jobs get, uh, get assigned by networking. Well, this is where the third piece of advice comes in. I want you to leverage your employee referrals. So encourage your, your, your colleagues, your current employees to refer you candidates. People know people. So, you know, in, in employee referrals often lead to hires who fit well into the company culture. So, um, you know, we like to work with people who work the way we like, uh, the way we work. So using employee referrals is indeed very important. Number four, networking. Attend industry events, conferences, and meetups, you know, mingle with people uh, in your business in your uh, function and there you will be able to find a lot of talent now that's the fourth piece of advice. let me give you the fifth classical piece of advice but i will immediately cross it out so the fifth classical is utilize recruitment agencies so basically headhunters well my personal view is this is not the best way to go maybe it was 20 years ago I think definitely today, first of all, you don't need them. They are extremely expensive and the way they work for me really is, let's say, not optimal. Now, we can discuss it offline, but definitely I, I don't think that in today's world you need this at all. And there is definitely much more than you can do, much faster, much easier and in coordination with your HR more efficiently. So let me move to tip number six. Social media and online presence is very important, as you will not be surprised to read. Maintain an active presence on all social media. I mean, we make an effort continuously to be on the media. That's important. Share updates of what we do, the openings that we have. I mean, people are constantly looking at social media, right? You personally are looking at social media. So, so we work there. That is very, very important. Number seven, when you to have the candidate in front of you, please, please conduct thorough interviews. Please prepare for that, and we will see how we should prepare for that. But develop a structured interview process that includes behavioral and technical questions. Multiple rounds of interviews with different team members can provide a well-rounded evaluation. On to the following a little piece of advice, check the references. This is something that we often don't do. So we ask for references, but then we don't call the people. We don't contact the people. Well, do it because it is very, very important that, you know, in, on, on a piece of paper, I can write whatever. I can, I can be expert in anything. I can even learn to talk about a certain topic and I can, I can mislead you to think that I am your best candidate. Well, that is why it's important to check the referrals. What else do we have here now? Let's see. Um, something that is also very important, you might tell me, Rick, this is soft. Well, yes, it is soft, but it is very important. You need to check the cultural fit. You know, you might have a fantastic candidate, technically speaking, but the person might not fit to the organizational culture. And that frequently results in a disaster. So even if the person meets all your technical requirements, make sure that person also will go into your organization and interact efficiently, effectively, and nicely, nicely. Remember, we need to enjoy this thing, right? We need to enjoy life. So please, please, please do not think this is a soft thing that you should not be focusing on. It is very important. Evaluate the culture of it. Last piece of advice, 
please provide feedback to candidates. So keep the candidates informed what happens. Even if you don't like them, if you reject them, please give them feedback. There's nothing less, there's nothing more demotivating than going to an interview and never hearing back from the interviewer. So please do give feedback, even if negative. Okay, so let's move on to the next, uh, to the next question. Now, okay, imagine you are preparing uh, to hold a job interview for this job that you want to staff. So what do I want you to do? I want you to do a couple of things that I want you to do very systematically. First of all, you will not be surprised. I want you to prepare well. I want you to review the candidate's resume beforehand. I want you to read the cover letter beforehand. And I any other materials that the candidate might have submitted, please check it out. Familiarize yourself with the job description and the key qualifications needed for the role. And develop a list of questions. I will help you with this. That assess the candidate's skills, experience, and cultural fit, right? So please be very well prepared. Do not walk into a job interview just thinking that you know what to ask. Please do not do that. Next one, create a structured interview format. Maybe bring like a template. Maybe this also ensures that uh, you evaluate all candidates equally. It doesn't need to be rocket science. It can be a simple Excel sheet or a simple word uh, questionnaire, whatever. But um, use it also to keep like sort of like a scoring system uh, uh, so that you are evaluating all candidates uh, with the same yardstick. That is very important also for your own professional and for your own fairness. Number three, once you are in the interview, please active listening and effective communication. I want you to really be listening to the person. I want you to be giving the candidate your full attention please no phones no laptops and uh, let them let them uh, speak without interruption encourage them to provide examples of what they have done in the past ask follow-up questions listen to what the person is talking very frequently in the interviews we ask a question we we'll let the interviewer talk and we are thinking of the um, of the next question avoid this avoid this concentrate on the question that you are asking at that very moment Number four, assess the cultural fit. Once again, I've discussed before, but here also, so one, once you have the interview, make sure you do this. And the way you do this is you compare this with your mission, with your values, with the culture, how we fit, how we act, how we talk here. You need to contrast this with the candidate's profile. Next one, provide a positive candidate experience. So there are, there are many things that you can do. I'm just here uh, a couple of them. So remember the candidates are also evaluating you as a company during the process. So you want to create a, a very nice experience. For example, you know, start the interview friendly, you know, treat people well, explain them the next steps in the hiring process, give them time to ask questions, offer feedback, send a thank you email. I mean, there's many, many little things that you can do to make this better. So I encourage you and I invite you to do it. One last piece of advice on this topic, involve your team members. If you like a candidate, so imagine that you have shortlisted uh, the candidates from say whatever, from 10 to three or 10 to two people, then allow your team members, but help them prepare the interview to go and uh, interview the people. Maybe you have the last word, of course, maybe you have the decision, not your team, but allow them also for the sake of checking the fit. That's very, very important. So those are six uh, pieces of advice for the interview. Now, let me move to the next topic. Okay, so what should I ask the interviewee? Uh, what are the typical questions for a job interview? Well. I normally use seven questions for my, the interviews that I prepare people for. Uh, seven plus one. So, you know, I like seven. So let me start uh, showing you. It's very simple. So first one, the most classical, the classical, tell me about yourself. You're going to ask people, tell me about yourself. And then just let people talk. Let people talk for no more than three, four minutes. In three or four minutes, the person should be able to identify themselves to tell you what they do, who they are, what they are, what they have accomplished. And if they are capable of summarizing that in three minutes, then 
it's a good candidate. If not, then you, you, you can stop there immediately almost. Of course, you will not do it because you want to be polite, but uh, literally you could. Because if somebody is not able to present himself or herself efficiently in three or four minutes, then we have a problem here. Next question, typical. I ask, what is your biggest accomplishment until now? You know, people prepare this, the, the, the CV, the resumes and, and the cover letters and all that, but sometimes they know or they have identified in their career one thing as their biggest accomplishment. Well, ask that. What's your biggest accomplishment? What have you done that is tremendously outstanding? And see also how well they are in expressing that success, in, 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 in describing you that accomplishment. Um, if the person hesitates, is the, if the person doesn't have a quick answer, hmm, hmm, you start having questions. Now, third question. I ask this very simple question of, can you tell me what exactly do you do in your current job? Please, what exactly? Don't, don't talk to me generally or in abstract terms. Tell me what exactly do you Because it's very, very important that you understand what the candidate exactly does at his or her current job. That tells you whether the person is or not prepared for the job that you are trying to staff. This is a, sounds like a very stupid question, but I think it's very deep, very profound. Number four, ask a very direct question. What are your main strengths? And then just shut up and listen what they have to say. What are your main strengths? Number five, what are your main weaknesses? Here is, you know, this is a very tricky question. It looks like simple and easy, but it's not. The classical wrong answers are things like, for example, oh, I work a lot. Or, oh, I am a workaholic. <laughs> that kind of answers are wrong. First of all, because they show you that the person has not prepared for the interview. Secondly, because it tells you that the person has a low level of self-awareness and probably a high level of self-esteem and a, a, a low um, consciousness of uh, him or herself. If you know yourself well, you know your weaknesses. And if you know your weaknesses, you're able to speak about them without fear. So that question is very important. Let's move to number six. I say, tell me about an important failure in your career. And then I just listen. Truly professional people know very well about important failures in their career. And we all have failures and that's okay, but we need to be self-conscious and we need to know how to describe them. And very, very importantly, we need to know what we have learned out of that and what we are doing with that experience afterwards. Seventh and final question. I simply and directly ask, why shall we hire you above the other candidates? And just listen. If the answer to this question is just blah, 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 then you know the candidate is not your person. If the answer to this question simply goes back to talking about the strengths or what they have done and so forth, this is not your question, your candidate. You want an answer that, it, that has value in itself, an answer that convinces you that this individual will do the job better than the other candidates that you have. And you have so many candidates. So these are the seven typical questions that I ask in the interview. But then I also drop another one, final, which is very important. Take a listen. The eighth question that I launch is, do you have questions for me? And then I make a big silence. Do you have questions for me? And very frequently I get crap questions. If you get crappy questions, you know the candidate is not your candidate. A good candidate will have a couple of intelligent, well-prepared questions based on facts of your company, based on facts of your industry, based on facts of the business. So if the person says, yeah, what are the working hours? Or can I work from home? Or things like that, you know is the wrong candidate. So, you know, here you expect, you should expect business related questions. So hard questions about the business, about the job, about the industry, about the competitors. If not, you can forget that candidate. 
So those are my, uh, my own personal list of questions that I ask and that I prepare also when I coach people for interviews. I need to prepare them to answer efficiently and effectively all these seven plus one questions. Now, let me move to a different topic. So those are the typical questions. Now, what are the atypical questions for a job interview? What are the questions that will give you more, uh, a wider view of the individual? Well, I have for you three, at least three questions that I want you to ask. So remember that uh, people were talking about their weaknesses or mainly their strengths about their successes. Okay. When they answer you the questions about their successes, about their, their strengths, make a couple of notes and listen carefully what they say. And then you drop them this question. Hey, you just said you are, hmm, for example, hey, you just said you are very creative. Okay. Can you give me an example of that? Or you just said you have fantastic analytical skills. Can you make me an example of that? Or you just said you are uh, very strong in communications. Can you make me an example? And then you shut up and you listen. And the answer should come in the smart form. So, an ideal answer to this question is the person will tell you where that happened, when that happened, what happened, why was it important for the company, and how uh, he or she applied uh, his strengths to do that. For example, let me make you a simple example. Um, hey, you just said you are very creative. Can you make me an example? Then the answer could be, because it's an example, should be very smart. So... Okay, you know, where, uh, when I was working for um, Generali down in Milan in the year 2019, I was in charge of a project called XYZ. This was very important for the company because it represented 200 million in GWP. What I did is I implemented XYZ and by doing that, I managed to a, B, C. You see, very concrete answer, not blah, blah, not bubbling. Just give me the right precise answer in a smart form. That's what you want to hear. And you can ask this question. That's why, uh, that's why I call it the, you just said you are question about anything that the person has told you in the previous set of logical of basic questions. So this is the additional uh, non, non typical, the atypical question number one. Now, let me move to a typical question number two. The ethical dilemma question, you know, it's also very important that you assess the individual, especially in second round interviews or third round interviews, the final, final part of the process. You can ask the person about an ethical dilemma and you want to listen if they have ever encountered some. And any professional with any relevant experience will have encountered at some point in his, her career, an ethical dilemma. Ethical dilemmas are things that you were confronted with at some point. You had like two roads that diverged uh, in a yellow wood, the poem would say. Two roads that diverged. You, you had two options and you could choose between A and B, but the best one maybe represented some ethical deviations to your own values or to the company's policies. And then you were wondering whether to go with A, which was better, but or B, which was less good, but had no bots, right? And you want to listen how the person has uh, faced this ethical dilemma and whether he or she has solved it in the appropriate way. This is a very useful question I invite you to use. Third, a typical question that I use is, well, tell me what do you not want me to discover about you if I were to hire you? You know? We all have little skeletons in the closets at some point. So uh, it, this, this is a, a bit more uh, a, a tough question, but you can say, hey, like in a final round of interviews or so, you can always say, do you have anything that you want me to know now that you don't want me to discover later on if we hire you? And then just shut up and you will be surprised. You will be surprised because many people come up with, well, you know, you should know that dot, dot, dot. Well, maybe I should tell you that, dot, 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 dot. And then you are the one who will not have surprises. And you know, in business, we don't want surprises. 
So these are the three atypical questions that I invite you also to use in your interview process. Now, finally, the best questions. Huh? Uh, so the, we have seen the typical questions, we have seen the atypical questions. I bring you the atypical questions. After the typical, I bring you the best questions. And those are, ta -da, those are, of course, the business case questions as we do at the HBS recruiting process. And the, what are the business case questions? Business case questions are, okay, I'm not going to ask you anything about yourself. I'm not going to ask you where you went to school. I'm not going to ask you what uh, have you done so far. I'm not going to ask you your strengths. I'm not going to ask you your weaknesses or your accomplishments or uh, whatever. I am simply going to present you with a business case and you need to solve it. And I give you 10 minutes to solve it. Let me make you four examples. So example number one, and uh, this is a real case. I had it once in an interview. How many traffic lights are there in Boston? That's it. That's your interview. How many traffic lights are there in Boston? And then you allow the person to think and the person should come up with a solution. Does the person know how many traffic lights are in Boston? Of course not. Does the person know how to calculate that? No. But you want to see how the person thinks. You want to see how the person goes about finding the solution. So think about what you would do to answer the question. How many traffic lights are there in Boston? This is a real case interview. It happened to me, I think, with Mary Lynch many, many years ago. So this is a real one, good one. Let me ask you another one. Second example of a business case question. Can you tell me, dear candidate, how many ice creams, how many ice cream cones are sold in Italy every summer? Does the person know the answer? Of course not. Does the person come from the ice cream industry? Of course not. Are you in the ice cream business? Most probably not. What you want to see is how the people use this. Uh, their brains. You want to hear how people go about figuring out things in a in a in an environment without information. What assumptions are they making? What calculations can they come up with? Where can they gather information from? What kind of questions do they ask you to try to solve the problem? So this is the second example: How many ice creams are sold in Italy every year? Another one, for example. The value chain question. The value chain question is, is, is a very nice one. For example, this is, was also a real case that happened to me once. Um, imagine that you are at a, you are consulting for a Tetra Pak. And, and then all of a sudden we start detecting a lack of packaging for the different clients that we have. What do you do? Period. That's it. That's your interview. What do you do? They, what you want to do, what you want to do is to try and force the candidate to think about the value chain. Of course, you never say the words value chain. You just see if the candidate comes up with the idea that things connect in the value chain and that there is a process on, on, in every business on earth, in every industry, we have processes. And you want to check if the person has a mentality uh, that allows him or her to decompose the value chain of any industry that you can think of and come up with a rational solution. So that's, that's a third example. Let me make you a fourth and final example. You can say, okay, we are advising a company in the business of selling mattresses and sales have been going down lately. What could be happening? And then you just stop there. And then you listen to whatever answer comes. It will be very interesting, the kind of answers that you will that you will hear. You know, if you do this kind of uh, case interviews, then you will find out many, many new things about the candidate. In a nutshell, what I want you to focus is on, with the case interviews, how the candidate is reasoning, what assumptions is he or she making, what approach is he or she taking, the speed uh, at which he or she thinks, the use of data, the use of questions, questions to you, 
also the self-esteem and the security of the candidate. And finally, the creativity and originality of the thought. So that's it. Um, these are uh, different interviews that you can plan, different solutions that you can plan for. What are other advice that you can think of? There are certainly many. I invite you to think about them. So uh, just to wrap it up, this is the sequence that we have had in the program so far, and we are today uh, um, closing this one, this 10th section, selecting talent. I hope you have enjoyed the previous uh, nine sections, and we will come with uh, another one next week. So thank you very much for having listened to this edition of the New Leaders Journey training program, Selecting Talent. Talking about talent, let me close also with a couple of advertisements, talking about uh, um, finding uh, interviews and preparing for interviews. Uh, or if you know people who are looking for jobs, let me uh, recommend you one of my books that you can find uh, uh, on Amazon. It's called Next Destination Go, the full color guide. And is a short book that I wrote a couple of years ago to show candidates how to prepare, how to handle the situation of needing to find a new job or a new economical activity. I uh, can give you some tips. You can find it on Amazon. It's, it is free for Kindle readers. And also let me invite you to visit my YouTube channel. There are many um, videos about uh, people and people development. Rick Serrano uh, on the YouTube channel, rickserrano.coach. Uh, you can find it there. And once again, thank you very much for listening to today's edition of the New Leaders Journey. This has been Rick Serrano saying hello from Luxembourg. Thank you very much and take care. Goodbye.